Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom and I'm an Open University student studying computing and IT. In today's video, I'll talk about the TM351 overview, which is the data management and analysis module. Um, quick, but I think I did talk about the last video, but if I'm wearing the same clothing as last time, I am wearing the same clothing as last time, because I recorded the video back to back. So just in case you're watching both videos, that is why um, I do change. <laughs> um, as normal, I will go through the Topics as a quick glance over. I'm not going into much detail just because I want to send the good side of the Open University. And I will talk about my personal experience at the end of this, at the end of the video. And yeah, this, this module is a bit different for me. Um, I didn't get on particularly well with this module, but that's a me thing. Again, all I'm trying to say is when I get to my point, it's more of my point of view. So take everything that I say with a pinch of salt. You might love it. I'm sure there are plenty of people in the forums that love this module. I just wasn't one of those, but we're talking about it. So for this module, there are no blocks. It's just continuation, different blocks. There's no blocks, sorry. It's just a continuation from the get go. So no different blocks like there is in some other modules. Prerequisites. There are prerequisites for this module. I believe there are prerequisites for TM352 and I didn't talk about that in that video. So I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I put that in the edit. But there is prerequisites for this module. Um, it is expected that you have studied M250 and M269. Now, if you're someone who has paid attention to my channel, or if you watched all my videos, first of all, thank you very much. But secondly, you are probably confused because I've not studied M269. Um, so how did I end up studying this? When I first began to apply for this module, I knew there was prerequisites. I knew I had not done I had not done M269. And I'd already done four year two modules at that point. There was no way I could do M269. But I thought it was just a prerequisite because it says you're expected to have studied, blah blah blah. It doesn't really necessarily say you must have studied, blah blah blah. So I was under the impression that as long as I've studied one of them. I should be okay. Um, I was not. <laughs> the um, It's like an automated system. If you've not studied both modules, it simply will not allow you to apply for that module. Um, so I had to email, I think I emailed student services that could pass them to someone else, blah, blah, blah. I basically had, they sent me back a link that I had to go through to apply. And in that application, I'd basically say why I should be able to do this module. Um, for me, I'd done a Squarespace course on data management, and I will link that in the description if you do, not Squarespace, Skillshare. You can tell I watch far too much YouTube. It's either Skillshare or Squarespace that sponsors every person I ever watch, I swear. But yeah, it was Skillshare class. I will link that in the description. It's a very good class. I probably should have done it again before studying the module, but I'd done it very quickly, um, a few months before applying. Definitely should have done it more, but I will link that in the description as well as a two week free trial, not sponsored, just it's there if you want to give it a shot. Um, yeah, but yes, basically apply for that and then they were fine about it, they just went, yeah, sure, no worries. Um, and then they put me on it, so that's why I was able to study this without the M269 prerequisite. So getting onto the different parts. Part one is an introduction to data management analysis. Uh, in that part, you will learn data handling terminology and you will also set up your Jupyter Notebooks. Um, this is imperative that you set up Jupyter Notebooks as soon as possible. You will use it every week um, from the get-go. You will use it every, every week. Um, you get two options with the Jupyter Notebooks. You can either um, set up your connection to the Open University server or you can download and have a local version of everything. Um, using like Docker. I went for the local version just because I don't necessarily have the best internet connection and I didn't want to be stuck in a situation where I'm actually up for studying and for whatever reason my internet connection dies down and I can't get onto it. So as far as I can tell you doesn't you can use both if you want and um, the setup for local was fairly straightforward. A couple of people had issues with it. it I just followed the steps and it seemed to work for me. I don't know, um, but yeah, do it as soon as possible. Cause like I say, you, that is imperative and it's imperative for all assessments um, and all practical aspects. 
just get it done as soon as possible. If you've got any issues, you can contact people in the forum and they're usually very quick to reply and answer any questions. So parts two to five is a look at the data and data analysis pipeline and how to deal with data acquisitions, preparation, analysis, and presentation. Um, in this section, you will look at Python pandas library. You will use CSV and JSON file types for data representation. You will learn how to import different file types into Jupyter Notebooks. You will see how to recognize and resolve missing data. You will learn basic SQL uh, or SQL. It turns into what you want to say. I always say SQL and then I see other people say SQL and I feel silly for saying SQL. But hey uh, Perform data manipulation and reshaping. You will plan approaches to analysis tasks. You will learn descriptive analysis tasks and you will learn key principles underpinning data visualization. And just in case you have not noticed, um, if you see me look down, it's simply because I've got a big list of everything on my computer and I'll make sure I'll tell you the guy's the right thing. So that's why I'm looking down, apologies. In part six, you will look at data protection and data privacy. In this section, you'll look at data management legislation ethical issues, data nominizing difficulties, and information commissioner's office. Uh, you use our website to give a very uh, good overview of the data management legislation. Um, it's not the most interesting week reading the legislation. It's not for me anyway, but it's pretty obvious why it's important. Part seven, you will look at why, uh, when spreadsheets fail. Um, you'll learn basic spreadsheet concepts, basic mistakes made with spreadsheets. You will learn inherent spreadsheet risks and you'll learn the concept of a spreadsheet smell. Which sounds a bit funny, but it makes a good concept. This was quite funny when studying this uh, this uh, particular week, because when studying it, um, it had not been long since the UK government had messed up with the COVID case tracker because they used a spreadsheet for that um, and the old XML file type, I believe, instead of XMLS. I don't know, could be wrong. Either way, they'd, mess, they'd use a spreadsheet which used to have a cap on it. That's why it messed up. So it was funny reading about this. All the tutors and all the students had the good jokes. It was fun. Parts 8 to 12, you will look at relationship uh, Relational Database Management Systems, RDMS. Um, you'll look at the benefits of a database management system. You will look at an entity's primary key, basic constraints on entities in SQL, SQL. Uh, you look at many-to-many -many relationships, implement relationships using foreign keys, uh, benefits of normalization, when it's an advantage to denormalize data, role of views in a relational database management system. You will create some views. You will look at ACID properties, uh, concurrent transactions and concurrency problems. If you've never studied anything to do with data, this is probably a lot of blah, but this is the only way I can really do it without going into too much detail. But maybe if you are smart and sort of M269 unlike me, it might be fine, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm so salty that I didn't like this module. But anyway, um, parts 13 to 18 looks at document and non-relational non systems and distributed tort and processing. You will look at the strengths and weaknesses of relational and non-relational databases, the sustainability of different types of databases for different situations, contrast between schema-free nature of document databases with the fixed schemas of relational databases, you will look at strengths, weaknesses, and the potential of MongoDB. Uh, you will perform basic CRUD operations uh, on a MongoDB database. You will present geographical data on a map. You will combine data sets to allow a richer analysis. You will look at how multi-server databases deal with server and network failures. You will look at map reduce queries. Problems of transactions in multi-server environments and the advantages and disadvantages of prioritizing consistency or accessibility in the presence of network partitions. <laughs> Getting towards the end now, like I said, that was part 13 to 18. So there is a lot to talk about, but that is like five weeks worth of work. So 
uh, Batman has been longer than five weeks, to be honest. Parts 19 to 22, you look at data warehousing and data mining. Uh, data warehouses, um, you will look at key elements of a typical data warehouse architecture. <laughs> I've just realized I put a typical DAT warehouse. <sighs> I can type. How data is represented in a data warehouse. What is data mining? Typical data mining tasks. K nearest neighbor algorithm, K means algorithm, how to measure similarity between documents, and how K nearest neighbor's algorithm can be used to classify text documents. Part 23 looks at the secure management of data, where you compare different approaches to data security, a range of mechanisms provided by relational and non-relational database management systems, and the risk of code injection. Uh, code injection probably is something you've come across in previous modules. Um, parts 24 to 26 looks at linked data and the semantic web. The, and you'll look at the aims of the semantic web. Use of a uniform resource identifier, which is usually done, uh, put down as URI. Build a data set consisting of several triples. You look at ontology. I've literally just wrote the word ontology. You look at ontology. Uh, you look at basics of OWL2 language. Sorry for the break, everyone. I uh, said so there's a break. You guys wouldn't have noticed, but I have just recorded the rest of this video and didn't realize that my camera had turned off. So that was fun. <laughs> anyway, I believe the last thing I said was ontology. You will study ontology. And then you will look at the basics of OWL2 language. You will use the RDF lib package in Python. Uh, you will use a range of Sparkle or SPARQL filtering features and you'll construct a Sparkle SPARQL select query. Um, spelling out Sparkle because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Hopefully I am. If I'm not, please let me know. <laughs> and the assessments for this module. Uh, there are two CMAs, seven ICMAs and an EMA. So no exam. Just an EMA, which is great for me anyway. Uh, for the ICMAs, you are required to get 30% on five of them to pass. Um, again, ICMAs aren't necessarily supposed to be tough. It's supposed to be more of a recap of a section um, to make sure you know, understand that knowledge is more for your own self-confidence, really, rather than um, really supposed to be challenging you. I know I saw a comment at one point saying, why, why is ICMAs so easy to pass? Um, so of course you can retake ICMAs as much as you can, as much as you want to as well. Um, that's why it's just really more for you to check on yourself. Uh, the TMAs are equally weighted, so 50-50, and um, they require 40% to pass as normal. And to pass the module overall, you need to get at least 40% on the TMAs as an average, and then you need to get at least 40% on the EMA. Um, pretty standard, but I always mention it just in case. Um, rude. <laughs> um, and both TMA and both the TMAs and the EMA require written work, uh, but there is a heavy practical um, aspect of this entire module, really, um, using Jupyter notebooks. So, my thoughts on the module again. Um, just because I didn't particularly enjoy this module doesn't mean that uh, you won't yourselves. I've seen plenty of people on this module forum really love it. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have, from the get-go, enjoyed the entire module um, from the off. Um, <laughs> I'm rereading through my notes and apparently it was very salty when I wrote these notes. Um, yeah, I applied for this module because I first thought it was going to be a really interesting module. Um, databases in general is such a big and growing um, aspect of computing and IT. Uh, learning anything to do with them really would be beneficial and it has been beneficial for certain. Um, but um, after the first few weeks, I'd lost my initial interest and struggled to motivate myself to wade through the never ending practicals and reading material. Um, practicals, there are a lot of practicals, it is very necessary and they can take up a lot of time, especially if you're going through them in detail. And the reading material, um, 
there are a lot of some some weeks are pretty pretty quick to read through the given study material but you do have a few books to read through as well um they are free access through o'reilly media through which you can access through um the open university library um they will occasionally tell you a book and say read chapter this chapter that um answer these questions on it so if you're doing that if you're reading those books and the chapters that they specify as well as doing the reading and the practical aspect is a lot of work um, for pretty much the same amount of time that they expect you to study something else in another module I, I'm pretty certain I spent probably double their time on this on this week on a week of this module than I would do pretty much any other module um, I think there like maybe it's because I didn't necessarily get on with the module particularly well but I really feel like they could do with restructuring this module a little bit. Um, there's a lot of information to get through and a lot of written and a lot of practical aspects. But I think again, similar to um, block three of TM352, if you watch that video, I think it, it is a, such a big subject um, to try and squeeze it into an entire module was always going to be tough. Um, so I think that's why there's a lot to do and it is doable. Everyone manages it. It's just, a, it can be a lot. So, um, like I made a quick note saying some practicals, uh, the estimate a couple of hours to do, um, if it's a really long one. Uh, and again, the books, uh, sometimes you, read, you expect to read complete chapters or certain parts from chapters. And obviously that depends how quickly you read. But yeah, it was tough, especially for me after I'd lost my initial interest in this module. Um, yeah, like I say, you might love it. Plenty of people do. Um, I made a <laughs> made a note saying I feel like this module is a love it or hate it module. Um, yeah, my general advice would be to look into detail on this module, look at the topics, um, give it a good read through the module overview. A I can show you when you apply to do modules and just make sure you really do give it a good read and make sure it's something you definitely want to do um, otherwise it can prove to be a tough and somewhat boring module at times um, some weeks in particular were very dry for me but again I'd lost that interest and again I've said it plenty of times but just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't mean someone else won't you might look at the web technology and cloud module that I really enjoyed. You might read through that and think that's the most boring module you've ever come across. Everyone's different. That's why it's my thoughts on it. And my thoughts aren't necessarily final. If there are any questions that you guys have for this module, please feel free to comment them below. Um, I will <laughs> try and reply in a non salty manner. Um, but yeah, either put it in the comment section below or feel free to DM me on Instagram or Twitter, whichever is easiest for yourself. Not everyone wants their questions public, which I, I fully understand. Um, and if you've got questions about OU in general, again, feel free to comment or DM me. Um, I will reply when possible. Sometimes I'm a bit slow at replying, I apologize, but I will reply eventually. Um, just stick it out with me. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, give it a like and subscribe if you want more. Feel free to ask me to do videos, any sort of Open University related video or any video in general. Maybe you want to know about how I study um, or how I use Notion to make my notes and stuff. I know I think I said I was going to make a video on that. It's up to you. Um, let me know and I'll definitely make a video on it. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. In a bit.